Hello and welcome to VCSP How To Videos. In this video, we're going to talk about backup repository configuration. So backup repository is, of course, the key component of any backup, backup copy process. It's basically where the data will reside when you know when you perform the backup. So the just to remind you, the overall solution architecture involves several key components to perform backup. So first. Uh, you need the proxy server, which obtains data from the source environment if we're talking about Hyper-V or vSphere in infrastructure. And the repository, it's where the data will be put. Both of those components, proxy and repository, are doing the heavy lifting job. So taking data and moving it elsewhere. And the repository is writing the data on the actual storage. Backup server, in the meantime, is responsible for orchestrating the operation of proxy servers, repositories, distributing the log load of prox pro proxy servers, uh, and uh, making sure that you know backup, ser uh, backup job goes correctly and is expected. So for the backup copy job, backup repositories are also utilized for agent jobs, for ba basically any type of uh, backup job from any workload, the data needs to be put somewhere, and this somewhere is in the backup repository. Now let's little bit go deeper into you know into details um, in order to be a proxy or repository server it needs to run a specific service a vim transport component or vim data mover as we call it so source data source site vim data mover obtains the data from the source infrastructure so it's proxy target site data mover is the one which is writing data on target so that that is repository so if we are talking about uh, backup copy job so basically the obtaining of data will be done also from the repository and the writing will be to some other repository so it's repository to repository type of data transmission now a little bit about system requirements in terms of the operating system you can run both Windows or Linux operating systems there are certain requirements in terms of applications which needs to be running within Linux you can find more details on Vim Help Center user guide. As of the CPU, uh, the most important he thing here is concurrent tasks. And let me explain a little bit what is concurrent task. Concurrent task is a unit which defines how many disks of virtual machines will be transferred at once. So if you have a repository set with default four concurrent tasks, it means that four uh, virtual machine disks or agent disks can be simultaneously transferred to the report to this repository so if you have a virtual machine with 10 disks and you have uh, four concurrent tasks configured then four of them will go straight away while six uh, disks will wait until uh, the resources are available so when we finish the first four we will just uh, allocate uh, the concurrent tasks by the uh, remaining report remaining uh, virtual machine disks so and that's really important, that's how you throttle the load on the repository, that's how you throttle the load on the proxy, and that's basically how you can uh, gain the performance or make sure the system is stable if you are just running 100% of CPU and RAM and you need to just lower the load a little bit. So, as of the repository types, we do have several of them, so directly attached storage, as I mentioned. Windows or Linux, network attached storage, so it's SMB share or NFS share. Uh, the duplicating storage appliances, those are the Dell MC data domain, HP store ones, quantum DXI, exagrid. And last but not least is object storage. As, for, as of version 11, object storage can only be used as a part of the scale out backup repository, on which we will have a dedicated video. Uh, and the object storage is used to offload the data from the main disk-based repository. So object storage is sort of a archival uh, location, or capacity tier as we call it, where do we put an extra copy of data or uh, the long-term GFS retention. In terms of the repository architecture, Vim data mover components needs to be installed again on backup proxy, on backup repository, those installed automatically when you assign the role of proxy and repository respectively and uh, in case of the backup copy the source data mover you know is running on the uh, on the source repository from which you are transferring the data as of the SMB NFS shares it's the story is a little bit different here uh, the 
actual writing component is repository gateway server, which you configure when you add the SMB ONFS share. And uh, why do we need this dedicated gateway server? It's because SMB and NFS share, they basically don't have brains, right? So they are only the storage on which we are putting the data and we need some machine which will actually perform the writes and do the heavy lifting tasks. So and here it is a repository gateway server. Now let's talk a little bit about how synthetic fullback was created. Why do we need this information? The reason for that is based on this information you may choose a certain file system over another because of the technologies we leverage uh, during synthetic fullback creation. So for regular NTFS repository or re regular um, XT4 uh, backup repository file system, when you do a full backup and then a subset of incremental files, and then on the, let's say on the Saturday, you need to create a new synthetic full backup. What we do is we basically merge the data from the initial full backup and subsequent incremental files into the new file. Means that the VBK2 will uh, have uh, the size of almost the same as the full backup of the initial full backup. It might be bigger, it might be a little bit smaller, but it will be just the full size of the full backup. However, with the implementation of ReFS file system, uh, we are able to leverage so-called fast clone technology. In this case, where you have the same structure of full backup and incremental files, on the synthetic full backup, instead of moving the data and merging it, what we do is we just reference the existing blocks. What does it mean? That synthetic full backup is created almost instantly, and it's almost and it doesn't really allocate a lot of space, so it's almost zero in size, right? So as a result, for ReFS file systems and XFS file systems, if you are uh, able to you know, use it on your repository, you will be able to benefit from a smaller GFS point size, smaller periodic full backup size, and overall you can just uh, make your offering for customers much more cost competitive. And now a little bit more details on how do you see if uh, the synthetic full backup is indeed being, you know, using fast clone, very fast fast clone technology. Basically in the job session you will see fast clone brackets. And now let's switch on to the demo to see how backup repository is configured in the UI. Now we're in the backup replication user interface. So in order to add a new repository, click on backup infrastructure and backup repositories. Here right click and click add backup repository. Here we have all of those types of repositories we've just discussed. In this example, let's proceed with directly attached storage. So this could be iSCSI connected or directly attached storage, both Windows and Linux. So we select directly attached storage option, then Microsoft Windows. Then we can define the name for the repository. Once it's done, we can select the repository server, which is going to be utilized, so the one which is, which is going to do actual write operations. Uh, you can select out of the list of the existing uh, backup, uh, existing server set it, or you can add a new one, right? So here is the menu of creation a new Windows server. So this could be once added via DNS or API uh, address. It can be used as a proxy server, as a repository server, and as any other Vim component. In this example, we'll stick to backup server, so which is usually applicable if you have a smaller installation and you want to run all in one so backup server repository proxy everything running on one machine if you give enough resources to it it's just fine for smaller scale deployments then you can hit populate in order to see all of the volumes available and if, if the server itself is reachable of course as it is as we're doing this on the backup server itself it's obviously will be successful so then we hit next here we need to define the path to the uh, to our repository folder we have a dedicated volume here be backups right then we can select the folder which we'll gonna use as our repository and here is a couple of important settings first you can click populate in order to again check the connection check the capacity of the repository and available free space but next up is one of the key settings for repositories and proxies concurrent tasks. So I've explained how the concept of concurrent tasks and that one concurrent task means one virtual machine disks transferred to time. And uh, in order to write more um, virtual machines 
uh, on the repository at the time, you can increase this number. However, make sure to meet the system requirements. So the repository server, in my case, is backup server, needs to have enough CPU core and RAM in order to be able to handle such load. Also, in some cases, you may see uh, over provisioning. We see quite often in the Vim support team when uh, when the service provider, for example, sets less than like 50 concurrent tasks in here, while the number of CPU cores may be like eight. And as a result, the CPU RAM usage may go closer to 100%. Uh, and uh, such scenarios, you know, simply unsupported. So please mind the resources on the on the repository server. Please mind the number of concurrent tasks you set here. In the advanced settings, you have some additional things which you can tweak uh, depending on which type of repository you are using. So in case you're using fixed block size, which is the default one for you know, most file systems, uh, keep line back file data blocks enabled, which is default. Uh, as of decompressed back files before storing, if you're using deduplicating storage appliance like um, data domain, store ones, make sure to enable this option so the deduplication storage appliance will be more effective in its own compression and deduplication operations. As of the, in addition to that, you can also enable rotated drives if you prefer such option, and also per machine backup files. Per machine backup files would basically mean if enabled and you have a job, let's say, of five virtual machines, each of the virtual machine will have its individual VBK file and individual VAB files. That would mean that uh, the number of uh, files stored in the repository will be defined by the number of machines, not by the number of jobs. And uh, this uh, currently can be considered as a best practice to enable this option, so um, as it allows enabling multiple I.O. streams. So we'll hit OK here. Now we can click Next. And here we have a mount server configuration. Mount server is a server responsible for file level restore mounts, instant recovery mounts, uh, as well as uh, other uh, application item restore operations. So it could be the same machine as a repository server, which is uh, in our case the backup server, as we again we are running all in one setup, or this could be a dedicated machine in some bigger scale scenarios. So uh, on the mount server, make sure to have enough space available on the folder you select as an instant recovery write cache. Instant recovery is our technology which allows you to instantly provision virtual machine from the right from the backup onto the onto your vSphere or Hyper-V environment. And the cache is where the changes are going to be stored. So you instantly recover the virtual machine, you make some changes to this machine, and those changes are written to the cache. So First of all, we don't recommend you running instant recovery for like 30 plus days. So it's an operation which you run in order to, you know, have uh, the best possible RPO, RTO for, for your backups to prevent any disaster. But once you have like off hours, make sure to do migrate to production operation. Uh, otherwise, if you run it for 30 plus days or whatever, your instant recovery cache will be really you know, significant in size and you may run out of space, uh, so which may you know, not be good for instant recovery operation. So vPower NFS service is the one which allows us to um, mount the backup uh, as a NFS share to the, to the, as an NFS data store to the um, vSphere environment. So we recommend this keeping, keep this enabled. So next we can review which components are going to be installed. Again, transport is our data mover, right? With power NFS is for instant recovery. And mount server is for performing file level restore and instant and, and other recovery operations. So you can automatically import the backups if you are just migrating and you have existing repository with data and you just need to import it to the brand new backup server. Uh, or you can keep this disabled if it's a new installation. So then you hit apply and wait until the infrastructure item is created. Once it is done, you just click next and here you go. You have your first repository added. So I'll show one more example. If you're using SMB or NFS share repository, 
how to add the repository and what's, diff what's the difference basically. So you, it's the same way you click add backup repository, then you select network attached storage, then let's select SMB share. So here the same way we can define the repository uh, and uh, hit next. Here we need to provide the path to the, to the share, shared folder. So it should be accessible from the backup server in order to for it to be able to reach yeah, the shared folder. And here you have a repository gateway server. It is responsible for writing, writing on the uh, target file share. And so this server could be automatically selected based on the location. Uh, however, for especially for bigger environments, I would recommend to manually select the gateway server you would like to use. Uh, and again, in case of all-in-one scenario, this could be the backup server itself. The rest of the settings are exactly the same, so we will, for the matter of time, we will not go through them. So that's it from uh, regarding the backup repository configuration. Stick with VCSP how-to videos. If you have any question, reach out to us and have a nice rest of the day. Cheers.